A very good afternoon. You're watching the Midday News on Rajya Sabha Television. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor with you. Let us start the news bulletin with the headlines. Fourth and final phase of voting for urban local bodies in Jammu and Kashmir underway. Voting in at 36 wards to seal the fate of 150 candidates. Results to be out on 20th of October. India has attracted $22 billion of FDI flows in first half of 2018, UN report says. South Asia's FDI flow rose 13% in the same period. Vice President M. Venkia Naidu calls upon industry body Asocham to be in forefront of promoting corporate ethics, inaugurates its 98th annual session, says organizations must create environment for whistleblowers to report any wrongdoing without fear. Alhabad renamed Prayagraj. Yogi Adityanath governments move ahead of the 2019 Kumbh Mela. And more than 1,000 small IT companies, mostly run by Indian Americans, filed lawsuit against U.S. immigration agency over H-1B visa issue. Case against issuance of visas for less than three years duration. Our top stories from Jammu and Kashmir, where amid tight security measures, uh, voting for the fourth and uh, the final phase of the urban local body elections in the state is underway. The polling, which began at 6 a.m., will end at 4 p.m., with many candidates selected unopposed and a number of segments not receiving a single nomination. Voting is being held in only 36 out of 132 wards in this phase. In the final phase, the electorate will seal the fate of 150 candidates, 38 in Gandhirbal and 112 in Srinagar. Five candidates from Gandhirbal and one from Srinagar have been elected unopposed. The fight is between the Congress and the BJP as the state's two major parties, the National Conference and the PDP, have boycotted the polls. Counting of votes will be taken up on 20th of October. News from Chhattisgarh, where the notification for the first phase of the state assembly polls was issued today. And with the issuance of the notification, the nomination of uh, filing process would also commence. The state will have polls in two phases on 12th and 20th of November. The final date for filing of nominations is 23rd of October and the scrutiny of nominations would be completed the next day. Withdrawal of nominations can be done till 26th of October and the counting of votes will be done on 11th of December. The first phase of polling covers 18 seats spread across eight Naxal-affected districts. And today is also the last date of nominations for bypolls for three Lok Sabha and two assembly seats in Karnataka. By-elections will be held in Shimoga. Balari and Mandya Lok Sabha constituencies and the Ramanagaram and Jankhandi assembly seats. Voting will be held on 3rd of November and counting on the 6th of the next month. The BJP has named its candidates for the by-elections. J. Shanta will be fighting from Billari. B. Y. Raghuvendra will contest from Shimoga Lok Sabha seat and Siddharame Gora will contest from Mandya. While uh, Shrikant Kulkarni will contest from Jamkhandi Assembly seat and uh, L. Chandrasekhar will fight from Ramanagaram. And two Goa Congress legislatures, namely the Ananda Sopte and Subhash Shirodkar, will be joining the BJP today. The two leaders met BJP President Amit Shah in New Delhi today and they will be formally entering the BJP fold this evening. While uh, Sopte represents uh, Mandiram constituency, Shirodkar was elected on a Congress ticket from Shiroda constituency. The leaders say that uh, more Congress Goa MLAs may join the BJP in the coming days. I already resigned from Congress party and I am going to join BJP. Are there today. any more MLAs from the Congress party? Uh, right now it is two. Uh, a few may come. Yeah, yeah. How many more sir expected? Uh, we expect another two, three people. Two, three people yeah, yeah, today? Yeah. Not today, not today. Could be... Uh, by a couple of days.
From poll bound Madhya Pradesh, uh, BJP President Amit Shah addressed the Kamal Shakti Mahila Sammelan at uh, Satna in Madhya Pradesh on Monday. And addressing the event, Amit Shah said that both the Modi government and the Shivrat Singh Chauhan government in the state are taking a lot of initiatives to empower women socially and economically. He said that Prime Minister Narendra Modi has ensured that a triple talaq has no place in the country. This despite facing opposition from the Congress. Amit Shah also addressed the booth-level party workers in Reva district. He said the ruling BJP government in the state has brought about a development in every field from roads, electricity, healthcare and employment to empowering farmers. He also expressed confidence of a BJP win in the upcoming state elections. <laughs> मध्य प्रदेश को विकास की ओर ले जाने वाली भारतीय जनता पार्टी की सरकार फिर से एक बार आपका आशीर्वाद मांगने के लिए आए मध्य प्रदेश को बीमारू राज्य से विकसित राज्य में बदलने वाले शिवराज जी फिर से एक बार आपके आशीर्वाद मांगने के लिए आए और 19 में नरेंद्र मोदी जी फिर से एक बार आपके आशीर्वाद मांगने आए and also on the campaign trail in Madhya Pradesh is Congress President Rahul Gandhi, who targeted Prime Minister Narendra Modi on the issue of farm loan waiver, among other things, in Datya. He alleged that despite repeated demands of the opposition, the NDA government is not keen to provide loan waiver to farmers. If voted to power, Rahul Gandhi promised to waive off a farm loan within 10 days of being elected. Rahul Gandhi is on a two-day visit to the state and he also visited the temple in Datya earlier in the day. मैंने उनसे कहा मोदी जी किसानों का कर्जा माफ कीजिए मतलब मुंह से एक शब्द नहीं निकला यह भी नहीं कहा कि हां बात सही बोली है मैं कोशिश करूंगा and on to some other news now, Vice President M. Vankhya Naidu has called upon bodies like Asocham to be in the forefront in promoting corporate ethics by following various reforms initiated by the government. Addressing the 98th annual session of Asocham in New Delhi, he said that ethical behaviour has to be promoted by individuals as well as organisations by adopting zero tolerance towards corruption, bribery and frauds. He also said that the Chambers of Commerce and Industries acts as a bridge between the governments and the industry in creating conducing atmosphere for the businesses to thrive and produce wealth. He added that the organizations uh, should also create an environment for whistleblowers to report any wrongdoing without any fear, saying that a total tax compliance should be the motto of every corporate and bodies like Asocham should sensitize its members on this aspect. industry plays an important role in the nation building. Keeping that in mind, government should always interact with the industry and its duty of the bodies like Asocham and other industry organizations also meet government frequently. They have been doing it of course. And then place before the government your ideas, your suggestions for improvement, short, identify shortcomings if any and then self-rectification also of the responsibility of the industry themselves. That has to be ethical governance is important and ethical behavior on the part of our industry that what is ethical tax compliance, simple tax compliance, corporate social responsibility and also taking care of their members as far as following the rules and regulations, that's all. Nothing more than that. Looking ahead, I believe that the success of the Chamber of Commerce industry like uh, Asocham and others depend on just, will not only f depend on focusing traditional business issues but on how it guides its members to face the challenges arising from globalization. And Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu will also be on a three-day visit to Belgium later this week to attend the 12th Asia-Europe meeting or the ASEM Summit. He will lead an Indian delegation to the summit scheduled to be held on 18th and 19th of October in Brussels. The biannual event is considered the highest platform for dialogue and cooperation between Asia and Europe in the areas of trade, investment, security and tourism. The theme of this year's ASEM Summit is the Global Partners for Global Challenges.
Apart from the opening ceremony, Vice President Naidu will also participate in the plenary session and have interaction with the various stakeholders there. In addition, he will call on the King of Belgium. Later, he will also have bilateral meetings with the heads of state and governments from Austria, Portugal, Switzerland and other countries on the sidelines of the summit. On 20th of October, he will address the Indian diaspora at the Jain Culture Centre in Antwerp. And on to the other top story, India has attracted $22 billion of FDI flows in the first half of 2018. This is according to a United Nations report which states that the global foreign direct investment dropped by 41% in the same period. The UN Conference on uh, Trade and Development in its Investment Trends Monitor reports that in South Asia, India attracted $22 billion of FDI, contributing to the sub-region's 13% rise in FDI in the first half of the year. And China was the largest recipient of FDI, attracting an estimated $70 billion in inflows in the first half of the year, followed by the UK, the US, the Netherlands, Australia, Singapore and Brazil. Prime Minister Narendra Modi met oil experts and the CEOs of oil companies from India and abroad in New Delhi on Monday and expressing concern over the negative impact of rising oil prices on the global economy, the Prime Minister pitched for enhanced partnership between the producer and consumer nations. He also said that relentless rise in global, global crude prices is hurting developing economies. Prime Minister Narendra Modi held a meeting with CEOs and experts from the oil and gas sector from India and abroad in New Delhi. Stating that crude oil prices at a four-year high were hurting global growth, Modi pointed out that the trend was upsetting budgets of developing countries like India. He appealed to oil-producing countries to pursue exploration in the oil sector in developing countries. Petroleum Minister Dharmendra Pradhan said that the government is now focusing on channeling alternative sources like solar energy. My colleagues from the industry and public sector oil companies and I, they are global experts in the energy sector. Today morning, we had an interactive session with Honorable Prime Minister, during which they carefully listened to the views of the global oil community. We are doing all this to learn and accomplish Honorable Prime Minister's vision of energy sector, of ensuring energy access, energy security, energy affordability, and energy sustainability. Oil Minister of Saudi Arabia Khalil Al Fali said sanctions put by US on Iran is a reason for the uncertainty in the oil market. He asserted that Saudi will fulfill India's oil requirements. Ladies and gentlemen, I had the privilege this afternoon of meeting with His Excellency Narendra Modi, the Prime Minister of India, and His Excellency Minister Pradhan. And I assure them of our full and continued commitment to meeting India's oil demand as well as continuing to invest right here in India. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley and Niti Aayog Vice Chairman Rajiv Kumar also attended the meeting that deliberated the need to revive investment in oil and gas exploration and production. Rising crude prices in global markets triggered an increase in petrol and diesel prices in India. At a recent review meeting, the government reduced excise duty on petrol and diesel to bring relief to consumers. Panchan and Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha Television. And India's uh, trade deficit narrowed to a five-month low at uh, $13.98 billion in the month of September. The trade deficit or the gap between uh, imports and exports uh, narrowed to $13.98 billion in last month as against $9.4 billion in September 2017. Now this despite higher oil prices even as merchandise exports entered negative territory after a gap of six months. The data released by the Commerce Ministry on Monday showed that exports contracted 2.15% in September, while imports grew 10.45% in dollar terms. And in rupee terms, however, exports and imports expanded at 9.65% and 23.78% respectively, mostly because of a sharp depreciation in the rupee. Now, despite the overall fall in exports in September 2018, items that posted an increase include petroleum products, chemicals, drugs and pharmaceuticals, cotton yarn and fabric, handloom products and plastic. 
And the wholesale inflation based on uh, the wholesale price index stood at 5.13% in September compared to 4.53% in August. Primary article inflation was up to 2.97% after declining 0.15% in August. And prices of fuel and power grew 16.65% in September as against a rise of 17.73% uh, in August. Meanwhile, retail inflation marginally accelerated to 3.77% in September, driven by higher food and fuel prices. And we'll slip into a very short break here. We'll be right back with more news. Welcome back after the break. On to the other top story of the day. Alabhad in uh, Uttar Pradesh has been renamed as Prayag Raj. The decision was approved by the Uttar Pradesh cabinet today. The decision by the Yogi Adityanath government has been taken ahead of the 2019 Kumbh Mela. Announcing the decision, the UP cabinet minister Siddharth Nath Singh said that it is in line with the history of the place. Abhi do din pehle, ek, uh, ki baithak bhi hui thi. जिसके अंदर मुख्यमंत्री जी ने स्वयं इसका इसके लिए आग्रह करा था और सभी साधु संत और जितने भी बैठक में आए हुए प्रतिनिधि थे सब ने एक ध्वनि से इसकी स्वीकृति भी दी तो उसका कुंभ के पहले ये नाम हो जाए वो आज अनुमोदन के लिए आया था और बहुत खुशी है कि इलाहाबाद का नाम अब प्रयागराज के नाम से जाना जाएगा ये यहाँ पर ब्रह्मा जी ने जो वहाँ पे उपवास किया था और वहाँ पे एक सैक्रिफाइस करी थी जो उन्होंने शुरू किया था वो यज्ञ किया था वो सब इसी से जुड़ा हुआ है ऋग्वेदा में भी प्रयागराज कहा जाता है महाभारत में भी प्रयागराज है का वर्णन है रामायण में भी है जहाँ पे इतना है और इतिहास इतना बड़ा जुड़ा है किसी को आपत्ति हो तो मुझे लगता है उनको फिर से विचार करना चाहिए and self-styled godman rampal has been sentenced to life imprisonment in connection with the two murder cases he and the 26 of his followers were convicted by a sessions court in haryana in uh, i beg your pardon haraba in two separate cases of murder and other offenses rampal and his followers were held guilty of two murders and other offenses including wrongful confinement of his victims and the two cases against rampal and his followers were lodged at a barwala police station on 19th of november 2014 and at least three passengers were killed today when a bus fell into a canal from a bridge at uh, haripal in hugli district of west bengal at least uh, 22 passengers were injured in the accident as well police said that the kolkata bound bus lashed against a cement railing of a bridge before breaking it and fell into a canal near a kojar more at around 9 am police added that the rescue operations are on a team of uh, state disaster management department has also been sent to the spot The RBI deadline for global financial technology companies to comply with its data localization norms ended on Monday. The RBI step was part of a wider push by India to ask companies to store more data locally in the wake of stringent global rules to protect user data. And 80% players in the payment industry including big names like Amazon, Paytm and WhatsApp have complied with the norms. However, there are some global financial technology companies that are yet to comply. and they have reportedly sought more time the reserve bank of india stuck to its october 15 deadline on data localization despite requests from various countries including the us to soften norms data localization is an act of storing data on any device that is physically present within the borders of a particular country where the data was generated all system providers now have to ensure that the entire data relating to payment systems operated by them are stored in a system only in india not ever know who which all hands the transaction has moved into or if there is a round tripping of the transaction you will never be able to come to know so this is some of the most important things it delivers and it completes rbi's monitoring system of not only the world i would say world matchable standards but the world class levels all the domestic companies have welcomed the guidelines global companies fear 
an increase in their expenses in a way of creation of local servers. What is the issue that the foreign companies are facing? One, they say that this will increase their cost. Second, they say is that the data or the information is a free flow thing. You cannot restrict it to any borders, boundaries or countries. They want it as a free flow thing, both the information and data. Whereas it is not something which is globally acceptable any longer in any case. But the Reserve Bank of India had in a circular in April said that all system providers will have to ensure that the entire data relating to payment systems operated by them are stored in a system only in India. The RBI had given six months time to global payment companies to comply. Kriti Mishra, Rajya Sabha TV. An IT advocacy group representing more than 1,000 small IT companies, mostly run by Indian Americans, have filed a lawsuit against the U.S. Immigration Agency over shorter duration of H-1B visas. Based out of a Dallas uh, in Texas, uh, the IT Server Alliance in its 43-page lawsuit filed last week alleged that the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services has recently begun a practice of approving H-1B visas for shorter than three-year durations. The lawsuit states that the agency has no authority to misinterpret the existing regulations and shorten the approval durations. Now, this is the second lawsuit filed by ITSERV against a U.S. Uh, CSI, CIS. The H-1B visa is an uh, non-immigrant visa that allows U.S. companies to employ foreign workers. These visas are typically issued for three to six years to employers to hire a foreign worker. And according to a media report, Saudi Arabia is preparing a report in which it is likely to admit that dissident journalist uh, Jamal Khashoggi, who is missing since 2nd of October, died during an interrogation at its consulate in Istanbul. Khashoggi, a U.S. resident, Washington Post columnist and a leading critic of the powerful Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, vanished after entering the Saudi consulate in Istanbul two weeks ago, where he went to obtain marriage documents. The Turkish officials say that they believe that he was murdered there and his body removed. Previously, Saudi authorities had maintained that Khashoggi left the consulate uh, the same afternoon of his uh, visit, but they provided no evidence to support the claim. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has arrived in Saudi Arabia to meet King Salman amid controversy over the fate of Saudi journalist Khashoggi. Pompeo will then visit Turkey, where Khashoggi was seen last in the Saudi consulate in Istanbul two weeks ago. And early on Monday, President Donald Trump suggested that rogue killers could be behind Khashoggi's disappearance. I, I just don't know. I'm going to have to see what they say. And we're working very close with Saudi Arabia and with Turkey, and they are working together to figure out what happened. And they want to know what happened also. So uh, a lot of people are working on it, Steve, a lot of people. And we'll be bound very much by that. We'll see. I heard that report, but nobody knows if it's an official report. So far, it's just the rumor, the rumor of a report coming out. Sports news now. Indian captain Virat Kohli remains the number one among test batsmen, while Prithvi Shaw and Rishabh Pant have made big gains in the latest ICC rankings following the home series against the West Indies. Shaw, who had entered the rankings in the 73rd place after a century on debut, completed a memorable series as he finished the series at the 60th place, a gain of 13 points. Wicketkeeper batsman Pant also continued his upward climb, gaining 23 points to reach the 62nd position. And in other movements, Ajinkya Rahane has gained four places to reach the 18th position. The 2-0 series result says top-ranked India gained one point, while West Indies have lost one point without any change of positions in the team rankings. And India's 100% organic state, Sikkim, has won the Oscar for Best Policies. The award was conferred by the Food and Agriculture Organization for the world's best policies promoting agroecological and sustainable food systems. Now, Sikkim won the Future Policy Award 2018, beating 51 nominated policies from 25 countries. Policies from Brazil, Denmark and Ecuador bagged silver awards. 
The award is co-organized by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, the World Food Council and IFOAM Organics International. Sikkim became the first state in India to officially announce the adoption of organic farming in the year 2003 to ensure long-term sustenance of soil fertility, protection of environment and ecology, healthy living and decreasing the risk of health ailments. Sikkim is reportedly the first organic state in the world. All of its farmland is certified organic. And that's the wrap on this edition of Fermi Day News. Thanks for watching.